Good morning, wrestling fans. Today is Tuesday, February 27th, 2024. Lance Brack here for this Tuesday episode of Good Morning Wrestling Fans. Hope everyone is having a great day so far. In case you missed it last night, there is a new episode of 360 Wrestling Fanatic talking all about last night's WWE Monday Night Raw from San Jose, California. Also, yesterday, we found out the passing of pro wrestling legend and Booker Ole Anderson, who was 81 years old. Ole was born September 22nd, 1942. It is real name, Alan Rogowski, I believe it is. And like I talked about it a little bit last night on 360 Wrestling Fanatic, is when I first started watching pro wrestling, I'd say his in-ring career was over for the most part. But I always heard him mentioned on WCW whenever, of course, they talked about the Four Horsemen and Ric Flair. And they always mentioned him as being part of the original Four Horsemen, along with Flair, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, and their manager, J.J. Dillon. But I also went back and watched old VHS tapes, uh, a lot of old NWA shows. And one that I mentioned last night was one that I want to say I am six years old at the time. It really upset me because I've talked about on the podcast before how Sting is one of my favorite all-time wrestlers. And it was when the four horsemen kicked him out. And Ole did most of the talking during that segment, cutting a promo on Sting. And then all of them uh, attacked him and kicked him out of the group. Ole, he was a really good talker. And I thought during that in-ring segment, he did a great job. And as I said, I was only probably about six years old at the time and a huge Sting fan. One of the little Stingers, as he used to say, And at that time, I remember hating the four horsemen. Of course, they were the heels was supposed to. Back then, it wasn't really like now where it's cool to cheer for the heels like the bad guys. At that time, you cheered the good guys, you booed the bad guys. And that is how pro wrestling was. But then, I was talking about when I first started. He was mostly a booker. And I have heard a few wrestlers didn't get along with him too well behind the scenes at WCW when he was booking and he never had a relationship with WWE or anything, really. I did hear on pro or, uh, post-wrestling last night, Rewind a Raw, that he did at one time have a conversation with Vince and Linda. And 
John Puck said something about him insulting Linda right in front of her face. So that didn't work out. And they never really did anything with him. Any of the documentaries, the Four Horsemen DVD that they put out quite a while ago, he wasn't a part of it. And now the Ric Flair DVDs, he wasn't interviewed for. And back when they put the Four Horsemen in the Hall of Fame, he was not one of them that was in there. And it was kind of too bad. Nothing against Barry Windham, but it kind of would have been better if it was the original four horsemen going in to the Hall of Fame together. Of course, Oli, in storyline anyway, was built as... Was it brother or cousin to Arn Anderson? And Arn Anderson has told a story on his podcast, Arn, that it was actually the junkyard dog that came with that came up with that idea since he looked so much like Oli and Gene to make him into Anderson and they did. And it was successful. And I wouldn't say I know a whole lot about his brother, Gene. Definitely have heard of him. I'm sure I've watched uh, some of their matches from either old VHS tapes, things like that, back when they were the Minnesota Wrecking Crew. But like I said, he will be missed. He was definitely a great worker, great on the mic, a big part, and influential to the pro wrestling business. And that is all for this Tuesday morning episode of 360 Good Morning Wrestling Fans. Thank you everyone for tuning in and listening. Hope you have had a really good morning so far and I hope everyone enjoys NXT tonight I will be back tomorrow for the Wednesday episode of GMWF to preview tomorrow night's AEW Dynamite which is Sting's final Dynamite before this Sunday's AEW Revolution pay-per-view and as we get ready for Sunday I definitely plan on having a new episode of 360 Wrestling Fanatic after Revolution as I always say not sure what time it's going to start as you know AEW pay-per-views can go kind of on the long side And then, after the pay-per-views, is Tony Khan's post-media scrum. Then I usually wait, watch that, and then, as soon as that is over, I start the podcast. So stay tuned until Sunday for that. Remember, in the comment section, you can go leave your thoughts and opinions on WWE. Monday Night Raw from last night and also your predictions for this Sunday's AEW Revolution or if you just want to talk pro wrestling you can say anything you want at all doesn't matter and just as long as it is pro wrestling talk and remember X is probably the best way to keep up with 360 Wrestling Podcasts Because as soon as there's a new episode right here on Spreaker, it gets posted to X right away. Also, we are now on threads and Instagram still. 360 Wrestling Podcast on both of them. So if you have Instagram or if you have threads, please go and follow 360 Wrestling Podcast. 
it would help out quite a bit. And I'll be back tomorrow morning, so I will talk to you then. Have a great pro wrestling day.